All right, and we're back, and we're back, and we. Why are we, we, we? We're back. We just started. You fucking. Hey, how's it going, everyone? I'm not mean to Dave ever. Uh, apparently, Gable forgot we're recording these segments out of order because he's dumb or something. What? Oh, we are doing this. You specifically asked to do the Thor one first. Now nah, we'll be fine. <laughs> Sounded like a fart. No, we're on the opening. You got the news articles ready? All right. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> wait, 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 hold Welcome on. to the show. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. so we're gonna we're gonna plug YouTube page here. Oh, so we are starting from the beginning, dude. I was talking to Costal today, and I I don't know what brought up like YouTube channels. And I was like, oh, you know, you can follow us on uh, on YouTube at Break Room BS. That's what you said. Yeah, to him. it was like in mid conversation. <laughs> I made it sound so fucking funny. That sounds really funny. Just so you know, you can follow us. What do you say? He's just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's game. just like, yeah, I'm not listening to you guys. So I'm like, okay. What a mean guy. That's yeah. not nice. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he's really nice. Uh, so that, yeah, that's cost. And then there's our, our other friend James who has a nice YouTube page called Son of Knives. Son of Knives Gaming. It ends with a Z. Yeah, Son of Knives with a Z Gaming. Yes. Yeah, make sure you go there and fucking watch his videos and jerk off. Yes. Yes. Yeah, wait, did you just plug our YouTube? I wasn't paying attention. Plug their YouTube, our other uh, links to our other pages like Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud are all on our YouTube page. So Yeah, make sure you follow us on uh, Facebook. Don't They're pretty standard though. If you just look up Break Room BS, I'm sure you could find it on anything. Yeah, really. This we're is everywhere. Accurate. We're everywhere. You can find us on anywhere. See, wherever you need to be. Like we're in all this the is looking entertainment weekly. They're talking about us all the time. We're doing shit. Dave's fucking Alexa Bliss left and right. Shit, shit's going down. Fuck rape. It is a fine line. <laughs> but <laughs> we made cover on the front page of Entertainment Weekly. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. Uh, that stuff. You ready to dive into news? You got anything going on this week? Yeah, we got some. We got some yeah, what's, Any what's fun happening? stuff? Oh, you want to hear Big something? purchases? You buy, okay. Let me, you want to hear you something got? upsetting? You know how I, go, I take my mom shopping? Yeah. True story. This is so dumb, <laughs> but... So you're at Walmart, right? No, no, no. no. So normally I take her... I, I get all our shit. I have... My trunk's completely empty, and I literally cannot fit anything else in it when I'm done, and my back seat's full. She buys a month worth of stuff, and my car is fucking packed. <laughs> so when I get to her place, she lives in, like, these apartment complexes. It's like government housing for, for older people and stuff, so... Okay. I have to take the stuff from my car... Walk like a long ways to the door, go in the door, get in an elevator, go upstairs, and then go on another long haul to get to her apartment. They have shopping carts there. Thank fucking Christ, because if they weren't shopping carts, I'm carrying all this shit. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. So I'm talking to her today. She goes, they took all the shopping carts back to Giant Eagle. And I was like, oh, no. I don't think you're going shopping anymore, Mom. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's too bad. And then she tells us, I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm going to be making like fucking 50 trips. You know, they have, like, they have, like, they're not, like, full shopping carts, but they're, like, half carts that you can, like, they're, like, luggage size. She has can, one of those. She has one? Okay. Yeah, but it's kind of breaking. You're going to have to get a, you could probably find one on Amazon for, like, 14 bucks. She buys, like, 12 to 15 gallons of water every month. Ah, uh, you might, you, <laughs> you might need a dolly for that. <laughs> I'm going to have to carry all these up every... At least you'll be getting your exercise. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) That's Uh, healthy, I guess. That's the big news for the week for Dave. Dave's sad. (laughs) Man, that's That's a bummer. That that is a bummer. You should steal a shopping cart. That's what you should do. Well, she told me that she was kind of nice about it, but I think there's like a retarded dude there. That's PC, right? Retard? Or no? Yeah, that's fine. Mentally, physically dumb. I don't know. Whatever. They're they're woken. This woken person... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> apparently is a troublemaker and gets along with no one and was like, these giant eagle shopping carts don't belong to us. I'm going to have these return to where they go. And it's <laughs> like, it's like, dude, these are all older people. They need, they need help. They can't well, carry their you shit. Need, you need to figure out the name of the complex. Just steal one from that place by work and just put the name on it of the apartment complex. And that, that way you can't complain about it. Wait, I'm supposed to transport a yeah, cart you, from there to... You, you need to figure out a way to transport. What if I just get it and ride it down the highway? <laughs> dude, dude, tape it. Tape, just get like a rope and tie it to the back of your car. Well, let it drag. And watch the sparks fly. It'd be really that's funny. That's a great idea. It'd be really funny. Well, I do live like a half hour away in one... It's one long hill. I live like a half hour away. It's a hill. That'd be fun. Uh, yeah, there's that. Anything going on with uh, you? Anything going on? Oh. No. Not that's, really. That's exciting. I only got nothing. It's exciting. Uh, dude, that Infinity Gauntlet looks pretty fucking dope. Yes, yes. Apparently, uh, 
we saw on Reddit that there's a, a guy who acquired one of the Marvel has their Legends line of like toys and shit. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's part of the Legends line, and there's a, a like a, a full a, like a one by one scale of the Infinity Gauntlet. Those are normally like quality, good looking figures, aren't they? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Those are it's like the the like the official shit. Uh, mm-hmm. I want, I'm, I'm gonna have to get one regardless. I'm gonna have to because it looks so cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, the the issue is though, like you can't find them anywhere online. If you search Walmart.com, they don't even have them listed as an item on Walmart.com. Yeah, this guy insists that he got this from Walmart. Yeah, we've come to the conclusion this guy's a troll and he's just trying to get people to go to Walmart and it's not there. He had to have had some sort of early yeah. access. It doesn't make any sense, or like they mistakenly shipped them a, a promo one and he just bought yeah. it. Like I was, was telling, in the system early or something. Like I was telling you, I think it was just some kind of like. I bet there was some type of show where, like, all the fucking... I can't remember what they're called. Like, Hasbro, Mattel. Like, all these guys were to show they show all their stuff coming up. And they probably gave a few away or something. And he got one. Yeah, like, the... Like, I asked him about it in the comments. And he's like, well, there's a few links throughout the rest of the thread from this website called Brickseeker. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck Brickseeker is. Apparently, you put in, like, the SKU code, which is just, like, the item sales code or something. It's called SKU. Whatever. SKU check. Whatever. Skew check. So you put that in, and they check all the fucking Walmart stores uh, in the in, like in the entire fucking country for it. And it, apparently, it said twenty two percent of the WalMarts have it, but every Walmart in our general area, within like a fifty mile radius, ha- has none. So well, there's not a lot of things around Hawaii. So why wouldn't there be much around us? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I, I I just don't believe that like these are for sale yet. Yeah, I don't think they are. And the web, the, all the news articles I read about it said that uh, it doesn't come out till spring. So I don't, I yeah. don't, I think this guy's full of shit. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, spring is much closer when the movie comes out. So I mean, I'm, I'd be willing to eat crow if someone could prove me wrong. But like, I just, like, it doesn't make sense. Like the bird. Yeah, that's a, like a thing. Eat crow. Yeah, I've heard it. Okay. So whenever I used to work at FIE, we would have, well, it, where we work, we have inventory we do every week, and we do it ourselves. At FIE, you had inventory once a year. Mm-hmm. And a company came in and they just scanned everything. Like they did it. You paid someone to come in. They all had their little fucking scanners. And everyone scanned everything. Dude, once a year, they have to like allow a huge variance. Yeah. Um. So whenever they, well, I mean, you got to look at it this way too. Like you're taking a year's you, worth of sales. Yeah, I, I was gonna. Say, I, I was yeah. just about to correct myself because you have a lot more items that yeah. came in. So it, um, really, the percentage should be yeah. small. So um. Like, whenever they do it, you'd have, like, 15 people all around the store, and when they scan something and it wouldn't work, you'd have to come up and find it for them. And you just hear in the back, they're just like, Skew check! And I'm like, what? Like, Skew check! <laughs> you just hear yell, Skew check all the time. It just made me think of when you said SKU. Skew check! Skew check. Yeah, that, that's that's stupid. Hey, let's, let's get into some news here. All right. Let's get with some news. Let's, let's get going with some news here. This We haven't had news for, like, two weeks, and we did not miss out on much at all, sir. I was, it was the bottom of the barrel scraping some of these news stories. We're going to start with the biggest one. This will be some fun discussion. Joss Whedon no longer making Batgirl movie. <laughs> it's, after nearly a year in development, writer-director Joss Whedon has stepped away from Batgirl from the Batgirl movie at Warner Brothers. This is what he says. Batgirl <laughs> it's is so such, funny. <laughs> it's so funny because it just it, it, it's yeah. not an excuse. Batgirl is... Uh, well, he admits it, but... Batgirl is such an exciting project, and Warner's DC is such collaborative and supportive partners that it took me months to realize I didn't really have a story. <laughs> I'm grateful to Jeff and Toby and everyone who was so welcoming when I arrived, and so understanding when I... Uh, is there a sexier word for failed? Because <laughs> he's just like, I fucked up. <laughs> but what, I, what do you think is the reason this happened? He's you, just like... You, you don't... Okay, you don't... They gave, I think they gave him this Batgirl movie... Because they wanted him involved with Justice League, they're like, "Oh, you can just do any movie you want." But the, dude, if that if that's your fucking favorite character, that's that's the movie you wanted to do. If they, if they went up to anyone who is like a remote comic book like fan who's a director and been like, "What story could you do?" They could think of a story right there on the spot. There's no way this guy was like, "Oh, I'll do Batgirl," and I don't really have a story. But mate, this is the Batgirl, you know. Yeah. Like, you just don't you just don't like think of the fucking idea. So what do you think thing? the reason is that he's not doing it cuz it's clearly a bullshit reason. Okay, so he has a really famous run on uh the X-Men called Astonishing X-Men 
And with this announcement of the Fox thing, I think he's seen a, a, like a lifeboat on the side of the, the big DC Titanic boat. It's, it's going bad. <laughs> he's jumping onto the Marvel lifeboat. And he's, he's he's, like, can I make an X-Men movie, please? He's jumping onto the piece of wood that can only fit, carry him. It, I mean, it'd be, fi- it'd be fitting for him to go do a uh, direct the fucking X-Men movie, considering he had such a uh, infamous run on the on the the on those characters, though. Yeah. Yeah, so you think he just thought it was a good idea, and he, he just had buyer's remorse. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have done this. I don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, he, he was he was out. He was like, uh, maybe, maybe... Maybe, maybe not so there's much. something else I could do. Maybe not he so much. He probably was sick of getting the, the criticism that came from the Justice League movie itself. Well, not only that, but I mean, if he simply looks around at what's happening with their movies... I, look at Affleck. Dude, Affleck and Batman, it's right there. I'm like, why would you even try? Yeah. After all the shit that he's had to go through and Dude, just dropped out of everything. So many people hate fucking Ben Affleck's Batman. I don't understand it. That was one of the only things I liked about Justice League was Affleck. I, I agree. I, I think any issues with his character are purely writing issues. Agreed. That's an issue, too. A lot of people confuse writing with, like, the actor. Like, yeah. You, he didn't write the lines yeah. that are dumb. Dude, I, I, I fucking think, like, aesthetically, he, he's a gorgeous fucking Batman. Can he's I a, say that and be straight? He, it doesn't... Yeah, it's Affleck. I mean, I'd fuck Ryan Reynolds, so I guess that's, that's, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, he's a hot dude. Next. He's Deadpool. <laughs> Fox has brought Brian Michael Bendis on Jan Michael Vincent on board <laughs> right. to develop a script for Tim Miller for an X Men movie entitled One Four Three. We discussed that briefly before. Well, what's it? Into? Oh, the uh, One Four Forty Three. It's, it's the, supposed to be a reference to the issue of something Jean, that or not Jean Grey, Kitty Pride. Yeah, 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 yeah that's it. Um, comic writer Mike Brian Michael Bendis has been hired by Fox to develop a script for a mysterious X Men movie called One Four Three. Um, he is known for creating Miles Morales in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. I thought you'd get a kick out of that since you love Michael. So he, much. Uh, he, he was uh, his run on Miles. His run on the Ultimate Spider-Man was one of the uh, earlier things that earlier comic series that I was interested in that made me like comics more. So yeah, um, I, I'm a big fan of him as a writer, but I just don't know. Does, does he have any credits? Movie, movie credits or um, TV sh- credits or anything? Uh, he created Jessica Jones in the Marvel Universe. He just gets create, cre- uh, creator credits, huh? He has moved over to DC, but it's going to return to the X-Men Universe with the Marvel property. So there might have been on the next page, but I didn't see any. It seems like a whole lot of comics, stuff. Yeah, because I, 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 it may have happened whenever we were not recording uh, shows weekly. But he, he got moved over to DC as an exclusive writer for their comics. Yeah. Good old DC. Yeah. Uh, Dolph Lundgren talks Aquaman. Let's have a little... Bit of information about Aquaman here. Uh, Dolph Lundgren recently spoke about his role in Aquaman. It is good to be the king, he said, of playing King Nereus in Aquaman. Basically, I try. This is just this is dumb. Basically, I try to keep the peace down there, along with Amber Heard, who plays my daughter. Uh, she's trying to convince me to join the right side. Then you have Nicole Kidman as Aquaman's mother. We're trying to avoid war between the surface dwellers and the people of Atlantis. I feel like that's just a common, probably storyline that goes on in that comic mm-hmm. a lot. The underwater people and the above-water people don't like each other and want to fight. But he didn't yeah. really give us any new groundbreaking info. Yeah, I mean, uh, he. I think his dad, his father was of land and his mother was of the Atlantis people. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't got much for you on that one. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't it's, uh, he was always torn between the two, I know. and uh, Yeah. He's like Natalie and Bruglia. Anybody? Anybody? I don't know ah. what the fuck's happening. Yeah, right she's now. torn. Uh, okay, that was a dumb article. Not your fault, but not your I fault. I told you, we don't got much here, man. That's fine. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church in mystery role for superhero film. Who's yeah, that? No. He played Sandman yeah, in Spider-Man 3. Oh. Yeah. Um, that sounds dumb. I don't like him. All right, sir. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church revealed in an interview with Joe Blow that he filmed a mystery role last year for an upcoming superhero movie that will not be part of the MCU. I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I actually have returned, but not in the Marvel world. It's another world, but it is in the genre of superheroes and villains. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Once again, he just said that. It's a movie I shot last year. They're trying to keep it, and good luck to them. Surprise, it hasn't been revealed already what it is. People are speculating they think it's actually Aquaman. Because that kind of fits with the timeline of the film he's talking about. Other people are thinking it could be Venom. I don't know. 
Um, who, who cares, is really? Is he the one who is Lyle in George of the Jungle? That could be right. He has a George of the Jungle look to him, like that seems vaguely familiar to me. The one with Brendan Fraser? Yeah. Did you hear Brendan Fraser said movie. he got raped or something recently? No. That's something he's he's part of the Me Too crowd yeah, now? Yeah, something happened where someone fondled his butthole or something. Nice. He said something about he touched his butt and went further and he got scared. I was like, what? Was it the rock on the set of the, the, the Scorpion King or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the right one? He gave him the rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> No, they were both in Mummy Returns, and then Mummy Scorpion Return. King was the one by himself. I haven't watched any of them. I own all of them. I just haven't watched them. Um, well, he said that was the, because of this is why he was out of the public spotlight for many years after that. It's like, I mean, that no one kind of casted you in anything that mattered, but yeah. those two things. You know they already announced a release date for Jurassic World 3? Really? <laughs> yeah. That's coming out June in 2021. That's a... That's a Three years away? It's pretty, pretty... If there's awesome fucking dinosaur fights, like... Dude, one of my favorite monster fights was in at the end of the Jurassic World, the T-Rex versus the uh, Adominus Rex. I love that fight. Yeah, it was cool. It was pretty cool. I enjoyed uh, it. Um, I just want to punch him in the face when I see him. Look at his nose. Who's this? Look at his fucking nose. This is J.J. Abrams? Yeah. That's why I hate him. Some self promotion here. God, I can't stand J.J. Abrams. Um, what would he do? J.J. Abrams is producing Overlord, which is the uh, Cloverfield Four. <laughs> I hate J.J. Abrams. He recently <laughs> spoke about the project in the interview. Abrams didn't give much away, saying that he thought it wasn't really any fun to release uh, the Cloverfield Paradox with everybody knowing that it was coming, and that the spirit of these movies and of the series is to keep it a secret. So talking about what the next film is and what's going to happen sort of feels counterintuitive. When pressed on whether Overlord will fit into the Cloverfield franchise, Abrams remained tight-lipped, simply stating, I suck dick. That's all he said. <laughs> yeah, that's weird that that's he said That's all he that. said. And he asked for someone to shoot him in the face. And he let's never mind, we don't want to. Overlord, first of all, it's something that I can't wait for you to see because the director, Julius Avery, has done an amazing job on it. But the specifics, you know, we should wait and see. But that's really a crazy movie. Thanks, JJ. You could have not said anything. <laughs> that would have been great. This, that was dumb. <laughs> this is dumb. Hopefully someone actually kills him because of the Star Trek thing he's doing. I hate him. It's ruining my life. He's doing the Tarantino shit. I mean, Tarantino should probably die more than him because of this, but... Tarantino is the one who wants to do it. Yeah. Wasn't Alita, uh, Alita Battle Angel, that thing you posted on Instagram that we didn't know what it was and you watched the trailer? Yeah, that trailer was cool. Okay. Well, uh, that movie got pushed back. It was supposed to be July, and now it's coming out in December. So, huh. well, what's up with that? And then, even more important to me, and you, the Shane Black directed The Predator is moving from August to September, which isn't really that big of a deal. Okay. Um, so, uh, are you excited for this Predator remake? Um, I never watched Predators, but this takes place before that, from my understanding. If it's a remake, it should, but I don't know I, if they're... The, 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 the cop and I were looking this up tonight. It takes place between, according to the article he was reading. So, it's not a remake, it's just like a... Because one, two, Shane Black movie... Than Predators. I love it. They're not. They're just. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. That makes me so happy. Yeah. Oh, Robert Rodriguez, you stupid bitch. I like it. Shane Black's doing something right. Oh yeah. I mean, Shane Black, you redeem yourself, please. What did he nice do? Nice Guys was good. I know what he did. I didn't see that. Wait, did I see Nice Guys? I don't. Uh, Ryan Gosling and I think Gerard Butler. Yes. Yeah, you, you saw that? Well, they had a party with the young girl there, and there was stuff going down. Yeah. I saw that. That was funny. I, I liked that. It. Yeah, I, I thought it. it was funny too. Um, all right, here's some. Here's a big, big, big article. Some mainstream news. Jessica Chastain is in talks for It Chapter Two. Ooh. You know, you know who that is? Uh, I believe she. I I can picture. I can't think of what she's from though. There she is. Yeah, that's her. Right? I know, you already pictured her. I thought it would be not helpful, so I did it. It helps. <laughs> uh, she has expressed interest in the role as recently as November, with fans of the film and even the young cast of Chapter 1 hoping she would sign on to play the adult version of Bev in the new film. That'd be cool. Everyone can hear you. I can see the look. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I can see the look, too. I, I mean, I guess they're all like, all right, do it. All right, time for the last arc. You ready to go out with a bang? 
I love. I would love to bang you. Chris Tucker says Rush Hour Four is a go project for him. All right, that's our news, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now this is good because I get to read some Jackie Chan quotes in his broken oh, English. God, I don't know if I want to do this. Is this going to be better or worse than Oscar's? This is. I think this is worse than Oscar. Okay. It's happening. Tucker confirmed. This is going to be the rush of all rushes. Jackie is ready, and we want to do this with so that people don't ever forget it. For the last seven years, we've been turning down the script. Turning down the script, Chan said. Yesterday, we just agreed. The script. <laughs> probably end of this month. <laughs> They're on the second draft. Next year, probably start. I hope. If Chris Tucker agrees. There's more. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not about money. It's about time to make. Otherwise... Dot, dot, dot. Rush, rush hour four. We're all like old men. Before we get old, I tell Chris Tucker, before we get old, please do rush hour four. <laughs> He's like, I need money. <laughs> He's begging he him. He was in a movie. What was he just then? Oh, he was, yeah. That's right. It was called. I don't I remember no either. interest in seeing but it. Yeah, I don't think many people did. I don't think many people it, did. It actually did pretty well, because that was the week we were doing... Uh, that was one of the weeks we were still doing that fucking game on our phone, the Fantasy Movie League. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember it doing well. I'm like, what the fuck? This is <laughs> this is dumb. That's all for news, man. Um, that smells really good. you have any articles that you can think of? Chris Tucker was... Uh, That's warm. I was going to say Chris Tucker was also in... Uh, it was in my pocket. Chris Tucker was also in uh, Silver Linings Playbook. I think that's the most recent thing I've seen him in. I didn't get to see that movie. I heard it was really good, though. Dude, I like it a lot. It, I, you can borrow it if you want one week. Nah, I'm not a big fan of that. I know. You don't like the borrowing or lending. Especially the lending. Yeah, more so the lending. <laughs> the lending's what's scary. That's the scariest part of it. Well, the borrowing is also because... That's also scary because then you could break someone's stuff by accident. Well, the borrowing is because I'll just never watch it. Like, if I borrow something, I'm like, I gotta watch this. You have to, like, borrow it and, like... Like, borrow it on the day that you're, you're planning on watching it. You have to, like, plan to borrow it. But that's the issue. That, yeah, you can't plan to borrow someone else's thing, though. Well, that's why I just gotta be honest and be like, I'm never gonna watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but... Yeah, I've, I've borrowed some books from people, like, recently, and, like, I don't think I've actually read any of them. Yeah. And I just put them... I put them on the shelf for, like, four weeks, look up some Cliff Notes. I, I, I swear to God I did this with Swamp Thing. Harrison let me borrow the Swamp Thing. I looked up some fucking Cliff Notes on it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I did you it seriously? Him. Luckily, he didn't ask me about it, though. <laughs> so, I, I, so he didn't ask me about it at all, but, like... That's really fucking funny. But I, I was prepared in case. Borrowing a book. If anyone asked to lend me a book, my reaction would be to slap him in the face. Well, it was a comic I, book. But... I don't read. Yeah, that's true. A comic book's different. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like the the comic book, I, the Swamp Thing, it was part of a, a series. So like, then I'd be like, in get like I'd be yeah, it's I, a commitment. I'd, ha I'd have to borrow the next one from him too. Yeah. So if you gave me like a, a, a standard like twelve issue like mini series, I can be like, oh okay. And just read through it real quick and give it back. But now I have to like know what happens next. And this I, is endless. It, yeah. It's an endless borrowing. Yeah, that's not cool. It's mm -hmm. not cool at all. I'm a balls itch. All right, we're gonna get, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back with some with this week's real bullshit, which may not be a lot of bullshit this week. We'll see what happens. But we'll be back. All right, and we're back. I'm trying to look up the name of it. What were you saying now about... Well, we were just looking at a Chewbacca toy. What were you saying yeah. about Porgs? Well, as I'm looking at the Chewbacca toy itself here, um, I, well, I, I, I just... I, is, I do love the Porgs. You know I like the Porgs. Ugh. You know I like the Porgs. Ugh. But, like, instead of, like, working off of, like, new cute things, why don't they just, like... If, the, if they're... Strategy is just to sell more toys. Why don't they just work off of old things like fucking the Ewoks and shit? Put him in the movie somehow, dude. They could have. Been, he could have been in an Ewok village. He went back. He could have went back to fucking. Uh, it makes perfect sense. Endor. Yeah. Endor. He could have went back to Endor mm -hmm. and lived with the Ewoks. Dude. I, oh wait, no. I guess the Jedi Temple's not there. I mean, you're making the exact same argument I have in the world of Star Trek. When I watch a new movie, right, or like a new mm -hmm. series, I'm like. You have, like, probably 
350,000 aliens you've already created in the Star Trek universe. Why are you using them? Why are you creating a new alien, like, in this new sh- in this new Yeah, it's, why, it's why unnecessary. Don't, dude, when I would watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine, I would get so happy when I would be watching a scene and they're in, like, a bar, and there's, like, aliens in the background, and they're, like, species of aliens I've seen before. I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, why don't you just do that? Why do you always have to make new fucking aliens? The, one, the, the, the ones in the background at the fucking bar are more interesting than the <laughs> ones in yeah. the foreground. I was like, it's a fucking Packlet. That's so cool, man. The Packlets were in Dude, one episode. This, this thing's fucking adorable. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cute. I'd fuck it. Dude, remember whenever... <laughs> I'm not letting you live this down. <laughs> Mine just looks like a Sasquatch. That's not it. That's, That's the fucking kid from the kid Christmas special. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's fucking oh, creepy as shit. Um, remember whenever like they, we first saw the trailer for Porgs and I got mad and you're like, well, you, he's given a chance. You never know. They might do something important that matters. And I'm like... I don't think they will. You're like, you never know. And you started coming up with crazy theories of things they could I was do. Opti- I was optimistic as fuck, yo. It was just funny you were coming up with, they could do something like this. And I'm like, dude, I don't think it's going to mean anything. And like dude, the they- fact that I was right as a side note to this, like you trying to come up with ideas as to what the Porg would do was what was so funny. It was the triangle. It was the Porg <laughs> triangle. It was. It's very WWE-like. <laughs> the Porgs will matter and not just be... That was a legitimate rumor is that the Porgs were like some sort of like, like, like spiritual, like, Gatekeepers of the island who who tended to the island Dude, and shit. There were a lot of rumors about that movie that were some, not some true. Some of the rumors about uh, what the fuck was that? Uh, Jacku? No, that's not Jacku. That was Jack Mehoffer. No, uh, whatever. A lot of a lot of there were a lot of rumors surrounding that planet. It was just really. Dude, whenever I remember when Tito watched it and he was talking to me, he's like, dude. There are so many things that they had wrong on the internet that they said were going to happen. He's like, I re- he go- and he goes, dude, he's like, I read reviews of people that sh- said they screened it early and were saying all the things that happened. They're like, they just made tons of shit up. <laughs> like, like, dude, why are you going to go online and just write a fake review? What is it? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, get a life. Yeah. I, I was most disappointed that Snoke wasn't Jar Jar. Yeah, that would have been cool. <laughs> That'd have been did, cool. did you ever read that? No, it's re- it's really funny. Do you remember whenever fucking episode seven before that came out, there was like the leak opening footage and it was with Jar Jar and yeah, <laughs> and then everyone started booing. Yeah, that was that, fucking funny. Good shit. Hey, hey we're back with we're, we're gonna get into some real bullshit for this week. What Here do you are. got, Dave? You want me to lead it off? Yeah, you get started. I'll work my way into. I it. have nothing planned, but I can talk about some stuff. Some some. Uh, I finished uh, some of the graphic novels I got from Christmas. Really? Yeah, there, there are three, about three I finished over the last couple weeks. Um, first one I finished was, yeah, my shirt's fucking stupid. Oh, look at your tummy. It's there got it hair is. on it. There it is, yeah. Dude, your dick doesn't have any hair on it. That's weird. That's strange. I, I like that we, we record pantsless. Put it away. Um, the, nah. the Blackest Night, uh, it was an event that took place, I don't even know what fucking year it was. It was a DC event where all the characters that were at the time dead in the DC universe started being resurrected by Black Lantern Corps, um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, you get zombie fucking, you get zombie superheroes, it, 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 it's some, like, really... Dude, fucking zombies, though, man. Just stop with it's, zombies it's, everywhere. I mean, this was like, this was before Walking Dead was super popular. Oh, really? It's older? Yeah, yeah it's older than at least the TV show. Cool. I don't know about the comic, but... Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a really fucking cool comic. Um, the the illustration was, like... Like I said, you're seeing like some of these characters be fucking zombies. Like, Superman be a zombie. Or, um... I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that died... Firestorm, or uh, so Superman, yeah. like the toughest zombie of them all. Uh, he it was weird because he was resurrected at the time, but he gets convinced. It's a thing where they resurrected and they were looking to to have an emotional spike from a character, and once that character got an emotional spike, that's why they chose the 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 other superheroes because they were friends with them, yeah. and you can get an emotional reaction from them. Um, and the emotional react, uh, whenever, like, like they would get super angry about something happening, then that Black Lantern would be able to, uh, uh, latch onto that and, and, uh, 
kill them and make them become part of the Black Lantern Corps. It was Lois Lane a zombie? I, I, I don't remember her being in it at all. <laughs> they and the zombies fuck humans. No. No, but this was like a thing Jeff Johns was working up to. This was his, his, his first big fucking event whenever he took over for Green Lantern. And because he, whenever he took over for Green Lantern, he established that like there's not just the Green Lantern Corps, there's the Yellow Lantern Corps. Uh, there's the Red Lantern Corps. Is he the first to he, do that? Yeah, and that happened, dude. Th- like, I, I don't, th- I didn't realize how recent of a thing that was. That was only like in like 2005 that he did that. Oh, that's interesting. When did that first movie come out? Well, the Green Lantern movie, say like 2007, maybe. Wow, dude, it came out shortly after because I remember uh, I bought a digital graphic novel for the Secret Origins of the Green Lantern, which was like. It, it it was kind of, it was like a flashback because it came later in Jeff Johns's run. It yeah. was like a flashback to like whenever he first got the lantern and some stuff that you wouldn't have seen. It kind of helped him be able to tell his story better and work his, uh, his version of the continuity and to the ongoing stuff. Yeah. Um, but it had a opening intro from Ryan Reynolds about that's, the character. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So Ryan um, Reynolds loves his comics, man. Dude, Ryan Reynolds is a comic book nerd. It's great. Nerd. Nerd. We love the nerds. Um, yeah, but I, it's a it's a really fucking cool graphic novel. Unfortunately, I I felt uh, like I wasn't getting everything, and I was looking up other people's reviews, and they said that uh, a lot of the story was still resided in a companion. Uh, book that would have went along with it called Green Lantern uh, Blackest Night where it was had the green the collection of the what was going on in the Green Lantern title and that kind of helped the story in the Blackest Night and I only yeah. had the event issues in that collection so uh, I kind of like would, would like to revisit it after reading having b- both of them but I don't have both of them at the moment just steal them but even by itself it was still a, a really fucking cool thing to read and uh, like I said the art was really cool yeah. Um. They, or, do we give sparkle dogs for these? You want? I'm not gonna give them because I'm I'm really riding the seat of my pants here. Okay. Well, I, I I'm not gonna then. stop you. I won't then. I watched the Mummy, the, the Mummy? Tom Cruise one. Speaking of zombies. Yeah. How was that? Well, I watched like the last twenty minutes of it, or twenty to thirty minutes of it, at the theater, whenever it was here. Uh huh. Um. And I kind of liked what I saw of it, but then I was at my sister's and I watched it. Like I don't know, that was all right. I didn't hate it. That was all right. Like I enjoyed it. I mean, it was, I, it was extra okay. It's their third attempt at this fucking uh, dark universal universe or whatever. Yeah. Like they started with Dracula and told that hasn't worked. They started with then they did that Frankenstein one that didn't work. Dude, Dracula and told wasn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was that great, but no, it wasn't like amazing or anything. I'm just saying, yeah. like. Like, it got shit on, and I'm like, eh, it really wasn't that bad Dude, this of a story. Movie, this movie got shit on, too. What was the second one? It was, I think... Oh, the Frankenstein. The Frankenstein one, yeah, with the dude from fucking Dark Knight. Dude, they, they they just keep hitting the reset button. Yeah, well, apparently, uh, someone told me, it might have been Ben told me, that Tom Cruise, part of his contract for this movie was, he signed on to do it as long as he was promised to get uh, a percentage of the profits from every movie in their dark... Universal really? universe, yeah. Wow. So I was like, that's pretty smart on his part. Why would he? Even, I don't. I wouldn't even want Tom Cruise to be part of a franchise. I, I, Dude, I, I hate Tom Cruise. Yeah, but you're, he's a name. He's gonna get people to watch it. I think there's like a few movies I like. With, like I like Cocktail. I like his older movies. Yeah, you're in the minority here. I think a lot of people like Tom Cruise. Though. I don't like his action movies. Yeah. I don't like J- Jack Reacher. Do you like Tom Hanks? I don't. I like, I do. I fucking love Tom Hanks. I love Tom Hanks too. Yeah, can their names not, are their names are both Tom. That's Tom, what you think of Tom it. Tom Hanks is easily in my top three for actors. Yeah, he's pretty great. But yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I mean, I'd, I'd watch. I don't know. It was kind of weird. Like it's. I didn't really see any mummies in this movie. But I guess there were. Whatever. The chick was sort of a mummy. I guess. Kind of. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She was just cursed, and then he got cursed, and at the end of it, he kind of turns into like. A mummy superhero or something? I don't know. He's like, I'm gonna... <laughs> that sounds dumb. He, like, embraces the curse. He embraces the mummy. He embraces the curse instead of, like, trying to get it broken. He's like, I'm just gonna... He's. They basically say that he's just gonna, like, go to, like, travel the world to, like, try and find a cure for it. Well, but he's, he's also gonna, like, stop bad guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, um... 
Fucking what's Russell Crowe was in it. He played fucking Dr. Jekyll. That had yeah. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in I it, too. I heard about that. It was all right, so. It was all right. It was extra all right. Yeah, it was extra okay. Um, Let's see. Is it my turn now? I suppose. Uh, I read... Another one of the books I got for Christmas was uh, called Reborn, written by Mark Miller. Uh, you might know him for writing the Civil War comic for Marvel. Oh! He wrote Kick-Ass. He wrote The Kingsman. Uh, he, I know Kingsman was a comic. Yeah, he has his like a whole whole own. It's not like it's really. I, I'd have to look up exactly what it is, but it's like a line he has. Image makes the comics, but like he has his own. It's not a universe, but like his own sub brand. Kind of like how like Jordan is like a sub brand of Nike. He has his own, he has Millar World comics. They have Jordans at Walmart now. Really? That's weird. I don't think that's right. It, it said Jordan on it. Hmm. Interesting. It was like twenty bucks. Really? Yeah. There's something going on here, though. There's something fagazi. This, this about sounds this. very fagazi. Yeah, I'm gonna look into this further. <laughs> um, Wait. What did you say before the Jordan thing? Uh, it's it's called uh, his brand's called Millar World, and he actually it's struck a deal with Netflix recently. Netflix has exclusive rights to make further movies that come from that his line of comics oh that's cool yeah i just got tito gave me the codes for kingsman one and two no shit i'll probably never watch them yeah there but my go. library grows i think i have the first one on on digital maybe yeah it's the first one i have on digital um i think ben gave that to me um anyway reborn uh so the whole thing is about the afterlife the life that you get to after you die from this world uh, Thank you. Well, there's like uh, it, it's weird because there's kind of like a few because like you die in the whenever you die from this one they kind I they didn't really go into further detail about what happened there but you do realize why well, that sounds funny though yeah the afterlife yeah I the life you it. go to after yeah <laughs> the very very Jeff Goldblumish I get it <laughs> the life finds a way life finds a way um yeah but it's about whenever you uh. You see this this lady, uh, she's in her final days in the hospital and she dies. And there's some, uh, what's that called? Remember they kind of like tell some story through some exposition. There's some exposition about her whole life at the beginning. Um, And then when she dies, she just wakes up in this like fantasy style world where there's these giant monsters and there's like armies of people battling one another and uh the 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 people who are good in life are battling the people who are bad in life the, the like the more good you were the more the stronger you are in this afterlife and she's reunited with her dad that she she tells a story about at the beginning her dog is like this big battle dog that has like armor on it and they ride it around for most of the comic um, like a rhino. It's just it's just a really fucking fun comic. Um, really interesting, not idea, but like a, a a fun stories about the afterlife. Um, the you found out her husband in the exposition. You found out her husband died from a uh, a mass shooting uh, while he was like in his like sixties. So it's kind of political in a Does sense. Even happen anymore. What? <laughs> no, no, never. Uh, but it was kind of political in sense because uh, at the end you do fi- uh, spoilers, spoilers if you did plan on uh, reading this. But I thought the, the ending was really cool uh, because you find out that this these this the ruler of like all the uh, people who are bad in life was the, he, like visually he looks like this big demonic character who has these massive horns ba- he bathes in blood and you see yeah. him talking to his generals while taking a bath in blood um he just looks like like the most fucking evil character ever you find out that is he fucking santa claus dude you find out he was the shooter who shot her husband oh i thought it, yeah it was a re- like like i throughout this whole thing i'm like oh my god it's it's going to end up being her husband or something her his her husband was like a dick or something maybe yeah. or but I was not expecting it to be the guy who shot him, and it yeah. was just it, it 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 got kind of it didn't get too political, but it kind of referenced political stuff that was happening. Like guns are bad. Yeah, uh, the, with the mass shootings and everything like that. 
Um, there's a really funny moment that one of the generals for the... There's a name for them, but I can't remember. The people who are bad in life. There's, one of the generals was her cat whenever uh, she got married that she got neutered. And he just has this vendetta and wants to kill her so badly because <laughs> he got neutered. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. <laughs> That's funny. You um, got spayed and neutered. It's, it's just a really fun, like, crazy fantasy style comic about afterlife sounds um, like you enjoyed this comic yeah it, the guy who did the art for it was uh, i told you mark millar wrote it uh the guy who did the art was greg capullo uh he did all the art for the batman run from the new 52 which i have pretty much all of collected i really enjoyed his run on batman and he's doing the dark knights metal art right now um yeah i it, if I was rating this, I'd give it a 10. Oh, well, you can't, so you're not allowed. Yeah. 10 Sparkle Dogs it is. Uh, it, 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 theoretically. Sp- officially. Dogs. Unofficially. You know, these mass shootings wouldn't be an issue if they had bubbles to cover themselves the up. The bubbles. With. Oh, God, the bubbles. Yeah, I'm just saying. We, 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 should, we, should, uh, we should plant some, uh, some uh, teasing for the bubbles and eventually one day talk about it. Yeah. Maybe like a month from now. Didn't we just do that? Just plan a, a tease? Yeah. We did. Excellent. The bubble shields. Uh, so what else? you watch? Do you watch anything else this week? I don't I think I think I'm going to talk about it, but I watched my cousin came over. It might have been last week. I watched Valerian, Star Trek Beyond, and uh, Mission Impossible, the last one. Uh, Ghost Protocol? No, I think it was one after that. No, what was before Ghost Protocol? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I don't know. Rogue Nation. I watched oh, Rogue Nation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, that's right. Rogue Nation the last one? I I don't. I'm not sure, but that's definitely the name of one. It was Rogue Nation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the one where he starts off on a plane. Um, Star Trek Beyond is still a fucking piece of shit. We won't get into that Are anymore. Are you sure? Fuck that fucking movie. Are you sure? I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. Valerian, I really like that movie a lot. And that chick's fucking hot as fuck in that movie. <laughs> um, dude, I didn't realize how much I loved that last Mission Impossible until I watched it again. I like it a lot. It was really fucking good. You don't care about them, but it, like... It's the spy movies. Dude, I just can't fucking, do them. It's so cool, because like this fucking dude throughout the whole movie, it's like this... Sorry. This, <laughs> he's this main bad guy. There goes all my fucking coffee table things on my coffee table <laughs> in my house. So... There's this, there's this bad guy that's leading this group of basically just agents that everyone thought were dead. So it's this group of just badass bad guys. And he's the leader of it. And early in the movie, you know how like every fucking movie or, or episode he goes into a booth or whatever and listens to a tape and it self-destructs? I do know that's a thing. Yeah. So he goes into and starts listening to it and it's the fucking bad guy. And he's like, Tom Cruise is like, what the fuck? And then he looks out and Tom Cruise's secretary is standing there and he fucking just shoots her in the head and kills her. And then all the smoke fills up the thing that Tom Cruise is in and he can't get out of it. And Did then it blow it, up at all? Or it no? just knocks him out. Like the, oh. the thing in there. So it just knocks him out and he wakes up and the whole movie is trying to catch the guy. So like, you're getting ready for like the final meeting with the guy and he sits down and he's talking and he's pissed off at him and some of the stuff he's going to do to him. He's like, I'm going to put you in a box. I'm going to end you. So you get to the end of the movie and the movie ends with him tricking him and he fucking puts him in this glass box and fills it with gas and knocks him out. And I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> like, it's exactly Poetic what he did. Justice. In, yeah, so he did in the beginning of the movie and he even just said, he's like, I'm going to put you in a box. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, it was that's awesome. It was just, I liked it so much and it got me really excited for this next one. The like, Ghost Protocol, which was before it, I, I was all right, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. But this last one I liked a lot. Yeah, one of the Tom Cruise movies that I did like recently... Was the mummy? No, oh. I, not that recent. Um, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. It was really good. No, the one with C- uh, Cameron Diaz. It's like there's Night something Day about something. Mary. Dude, that was really good. Night. I liked, Day. That I liked one. it a lot. Is that what it was called? Yeah, Night and Day. I did like that one. A I lot. was really surprised. I thought it looked like just a generic action movie. It was really good. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I like. I like the Cameron. Dude, I think she was one of my first celebrity crushes. She's hot. Yeah. Um, did you ever see that fucking bondage video? Dude, my she fucking, coming out. I don't know how it leaked out, and it's not even from a movie. Like, she just had this fucking thing she was recording where she's, like, fucking half naked and, like, fucking whipping guys and shit. I'm like... This whipping is, guys? Yeah, like, it was like this camp, this, this bondage. It's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. But, um, also, I watched the interview the other day, which 
I saw before. That movie is so fucking funny. Did you like the interview? Uh, I did. I, I liked it a lot. I dude, the interview is the reason I have voodoo and collect movies digitally. Dude, like it, almost every line they say is just funny. Like it's constantly funny. That movie is so fucking well written. I don't know how much of it was improv or how much they wrote, but it was real fucking funny. I love that you find it. Is this it? <sighs> yes. Oh my god. True story. <laughs> oh my Jesus god. Jesus Christ. Gable, this is your, real? your pants don't. Okay. Does she. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm just skipping through this it. This is a play by play of Gable jerking off on the podcast. Oh my. What is she doing to that guy? She's putting something in his ass, bro. He has like a leather mask on. Dude. She is into some kinky shit. She sure is. Yeah, I don't know like where that came from or if she I don't know. <laughs> like I thought you were joking. Like this is real. This is a real thing. Cameron Diaz is hot. Did you see that movie that she was in with uh I think Jason Siegel maybe where they made a porn video and they were going to delete it but accidentally sent it to like the iPads that they were giving out as gifts. I might have watched some from, from fucking scenes from it and jerked off or something, but I don't remember watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was decent. <laughs> it was extra decent. We got anything else for this? For the real bullshit for this week? You got anything else? Uh, last book that I got through uh, from Christmas. Uh, it's a quick, a quick one here. I finished it in a day. Um, a day? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, was the Power Rangers team up with the Justice League? Comic, um, dude. Did you come everywhere, dude? <laughs> the, it was a. It wasn't like a ama- Like it wasn't like an amazing, like groundbreaking comic. But if you're a fan of both of these things, it was really cool to see them team up together. Like it, like there, there was no crazy plot. And there, it's not like dude, the Power Rangers are kind of superheroes anyway, yeah. so it doesn't seem. It's not like fucking Star Wars and Marvel or something, which is just out there. It, it's sli- the, the the plot is slightly more complex than a Power Rangers episode. Is Becky G in it? Is Becky there, G? There's Becky, no Becky G in no it. Becky G? It's Mighty Morphin, not Saban's Power Rangers. Is Kimberly in it? Y- yes. There, I mean, all the characters in it are from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Is Jason in it? it? This is a trick. Jason the Power Ranger or Jason Voorhees? Is Tommy in it? <laughs> I hate you. Anyway. I met Tommy Jarvis. <laughs> it was a trick. It was a trick. Anyway, anyway. Um... No, but this, I mean, this was a really fun comic. Uh, I really liked the, uh, the story. Um, it was just... Were they just teaming up? It, it was Zed, Zed teamed up with Brainiac, and uh, at, at the beginning, it's just Alpha goes missing, and the, the transporter gets all sorts of fucked up. I mean, it wasn't like, dude, it was, it, it was a very stupid way of writing them in to, to, to get together. It's just yeah. the transport transporter took them to another dimension and they ended up in gotham somehow it, it i mean it wasn't it, thought it, it out got, super hard but it got the job done it got the job i mean it was just supposed to be a real fun story like i said it wasn't supposed to be like some big event or something yeah it was it was a nice team up that's all it was was a team up yeah um let's see let's see the art was probably my only issue with this it wasn't really like the drawing but it uh, maybe not the art well, I guess technically it still counts as the air. It's not the penciling, but whoever did the coloring made all the panels like really fucking dark for some reason. They're either like like dark blue or dark like either they would be really dark, really blue or really red. Why? And like it, it's just like there's a neon light that I can't see in the room or something it, or like it, no lights at all. Is it annoying and distracting? It's I mean, it's not annoying, but I'm like, man, this this could look a lot cooler, but I can't really I don't know. This should be popping out of the page, and it's not. It yeah. just is what it is. Um, if you are not a fan of both the Power Rangers and the Justice League, I would not recommend this because oh. you'll just be like, "This is dumb." <laughs> <laughs> but but if you're a fan of both and would like to see them interact with one another, it's it's a fun comic. Check it out. Check it out. It's Freddy versus Jason all over again. Yeah. The exact same advice I'd give for that movie. Anyway, yeah, 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 that was my... It was time for me to take my pills. I'm an old man. I had to take my pills. You should probably just edit this part out because someone could track it back to the time. What? The time that that went off? Everyone's would go off at the same time. So? so? 
Well, now that talking about it now has to go. <laughs> Why? I don't understand. No, one, all someone heard was an alarm, and that was it. All they heard was do 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 do. That's all I heard was. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Oh boy. Wait, that's it, right? That was it. I guess we could just end there. Yeah, I think you're done with that. You just cut the end of this segment off. It's dumb. You're silly. All right, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna be back with a a our the 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 continuation of our review of the MCU. A marathon of our review of the. Na, 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 na. We're not reviewing X Men, we're reviewing Marvel MCU. Oh, I fucked up. Yeah, you did. I will be back. Yeah, well. Alright, so. Uh, <laughs> so here, here's what happened. So the, the program decided to freeze pretty much at the end of our Thor. Dude, Dark we, we recorded 56 minutes of this. This fucking thing. Yeah, we recorded for about an hour of the Thor, Thor the Dark World review, and it's gone. It's all gone. I've listened to other pod- wrestling podcasts where this has happened, and they were like, yeah, this is our th- second or third try. You guys have people listening. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and record another Thor Dark World review for two people. Yeah. If we had a lot of listeners, I would, but that's another reason why I'm not going to want to do this again. So, like, if we go through this again, what, what would be the point? Yeah. No one... Uh, um, so here's what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the, the, the bigger things that we came to the conclusions on and we'll, we'll discuss those. Give your opinion of the whole movie and what you didn't like about what you liked. Go. I, I did not think it was a bad movie. My issue with the movie is that it just was not very interesting. I, I couldn't. Focus throughout the movie. I, I, well, it's not that I couldn't focus. It's that I couldn't get involved. Like I couldn't f- feel for the characters in the movie because I just didn't care. And it, yeah. it was just a story I didn't care about. I didn't care about Malekith and his his wanting to reign the dark world or make the universe dark. Dude, like, we lost the entire explanation of how of of. Oh, of, so, me, uh, of me not understanding it. I'm so sad. I did all that work to help you make understand, and it's gone. If it makes you feel any better. I still don't understand okay, it. Okay, but go back to what you're saying. Um, yeah, like I don't know. It's just uh, there. There's a combination of things that I didn't like. I thought um, uh, Malekith was a weaker character, which I mean, there are other weak weak villains in the MCU and. He just happens to be a contributing factor to me not liking this. Um, dude, you just look like you want to kill the world. <laughs> I, I want to die. <laughs> I'm so sad right now. It's what, it, I mean, it's whatever. We had fun. We did. We did. We had fun. So you didn't like Malekith. Uh, you had issues with the humor. The humor. Uh, the... <sighs> See, there's, there's a handful of Marvel movies that just have too much humor in it. Or the humor is just not good. I think this was an issue where it it's not that it had too much humor. You said the humor for you was perfect, right? Why not? We didn't get to me yet. This is what you think of it. Oh, okay. We're, I, we're just going to give our thoughts, then we're just going <laughs> to give our ratings and end this bullshit. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's not that there was too much humor. In, in Avengers Age of Ultron, from what I remember, I might flop on this by, by the time we get to this movie, but... Uh, I thought there was too many jokes. Not that the jokes were necessarily bad jokes, it's that there were too many. In this one, I think there was a, a, a fair amount of jokes, but like the jokes just weren't funny to me. Like, yeah. like Salvig streaking. Um, His name's Selvig. Selvig. <laughs> they have they show him streaking. They bring him back up on the TV streaking again, uh, and they also reference him walking around the apartment not wearing pants. Just the joke never it didn't land for me the first time. So the next two times the you brought it back up, it didn't hit either. Um, there like, but there were things I liked. The cap, the, whenever Loki turns himself into Captain America, and and messes with Thor about that, or the one you brought up was the the hammer being hung at the door. I like that. Or Cat Denning saying Mew Mew whenever. Uh, <laughs> You're so sad. I'm sorry. No, it's it's, it's hard to concentrate with uh, you being sad. I'm going to do this. I'm smiling behind here, I swear. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like 
I'll be able to I wonder, get over I wonder this, if, but you're I, just so genuinely sad. I wonder if we bumped the desk, because I know if I bump my laptop before, it freezes it. Did we bump the desk at any point? I I did this, but maybe that was a long maybe time Maybe I ago. hit it with my knee or something. Maybe that did it. Don't do that. I was testing. I don't want to reboot it again. It's, <laughs> it, I have watched it freeze by hitting the top. Huh. Anyway, anyway, so... Yeah, but overall, there's just... It, all the elements of the movie didn't come together well for me. I did visually enjoy like the battle scenes. Um, uh, I enjoyed when Thor's using the the poles to tear apart Malekith's body. Uh, one note. I di- hey, I have a note I didn't mention. I have a note I didn't oh, mention. This is a secret shake for all the people who didn't hear our last one. <laughs> God damn it, Dave. <laughs> The look of disappointment in your eyes is so sad. Yeah. You should have seen what it looked like whenever I thought we lost the entire first podcast. Multiply this by a thousand. Yeah. Wait. Remember when this I This is worse the, or that one was dude, worse? Dude, that one was way worse than this because I thought we lost four fucking hours and we didn't even start doing the show yet. So I was like, I'm not doing this podcast now. <laughs> but go on. Well, you got excited. Um, something you didn't mention. It was a comparison from Iron Man 2 to Thor. Or Iron Man 3 to Thor. Uh... At, at least, uh, at least Malekith oh, wasn't yeah. uh, was wasn't uh, the Mandarin. The Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, it true. could have been way worse if Malekith was the Mandarin, dude. What if we got two Mandarin movies back to back? In Thor: The Dark World, the uh, Mandarin comes back, but this time he's uh, drunk again. Yeah, it'd have been funnier if it was the actual. It was the Mandarin, not even Malekith at all. <laughs> all right, so that's your opinion of the whole movie. Tying it up there. Uh, yeah. Should I give my rating now? Yeah, we'll do that after okay. I give my opinion. Uh, so I, I love I love the movie. Uh, I love the first Thor. Um, one of the things I loved about the Thor movies is I love the characters. Um, I uh, I absolutely love the interactions with Thor and Jane and all the people on Earth. I like the stuff with him and Loki. Um, that's one of my favorite things about these movies is just them and the characters and the. I love the relationship between Natalie Portman's or Jane and Thor. I love that. Um, I thought that for me, I love the humor in the movie. Um, I thought a lot of the jokes were hilarious. I, I mentioned in the, the one that's gone to hell, the previous recording that doesn't exist anymore. I mentioned how, uh, I actually enjoyed Darcy in this movie. I hate, I, I did not like her at all in the first one. Um, I, I love that in this movie, you, like the directing and editing is very well done. All the action scenes are great. You can see what's happening. You can see the fighting. Uh, I thought the end fight sequence was great with the portals and everything. It was a really unique fight sequence. Um, was there anything else that I liked about this movie? Did they, I don't did they understand what was happening with the portals whenever they were using the poles? Yeah, they 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 like knew where everyone like. I don't know, it seemed like they were. It was all guesswork. Oh no! Like, well, they learned to control the portals and like move them where. She like they, to. They, so they knew where they wanted to. Yeah, there's then. even a line that Jane used when she said something about like how she was doing and making them go. They were. I can't remember what it was though. Okay. Um. I don't know, I think that's the general, the jizz of it. I mean, the thing that pisses me off the most about this movie, or not this movie, um, that upset me when I finished watching it is they're clearly setting up something with Loki, taking over Odin, um, and then the movie ends with him being, it literally ends with him being reunited with Jane. He came back for Jane, he's back on Earth. And then Thor Ragnarok is, go fuck yourself, Dave, none of that matters now. Yeah, I can None of it, none of it, everything they did in two fucking movies is irrelevant now because of Ragnarok and it pisses me off. I'm going to turn this back into discussion and just agree with you on that. Like, I I do like Thor Ragnarok a lot, but it is really disappointing, especially if you're a fan. Like, you, you, you were a real big fan of these two movies. It, it would kind of like be a middle finger to you're me. Like, you're like, I you feel, just, you're like, I feel for you. I, I completely yeah. feel for you. I like, I, I just don't understand. I understand, but like, I don't like it, it. It came from a business standpoint why they did what they did with Thor Ragnarok, not a storytelling standpoint. Yeah, and that's what's kind of disappointing about that is they they it's it is Disney and they are looking to make the big bucks even even if. They're they're trying to make the masses happy and dude Disney doesn't care about money. They only have fifteen Star Wars projects in the work. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, that's all, I think that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, some I I, I some, some right. other things I feel like worth mentioning again since we are uh, just to stay with the continuity from uh, episode to episode is uh, the hand gets cut off whenever 
Uh, you see that really awesome uh, double plot twist with yeah, the whole sequence on uh, yeah. Somethingheim. Because you're yeah, because you're like, what the fuck? Like like Loki betrays Thor, and and you're pissed off at Loki for a second, and then you see. Thor get his hand cut off, and in retrospect, I'm like, well, wait, what? I forgot what happened in for, in this one. I didn't remember this mo- a lot of this movie, and I see Thor's hand get cut off. I'm like, oh, fuck, it was a double fucking twist. Yeah. And it, it, it's really cool, because as a fan, I'm not, I don't know what to expect from Loki. Like, is he going to be, is he, is he, is he helping the, the good guys? Is he helping the bad guys? Is he helping himself? Like, you don't know what his motives are and what's a trick and what isn't because yeah, he's maybe, such a confusing character. Let me really further the evolution of him in that aspect. Confusing in a good way, not yeah, confusing yeah. in, like, a really you, dumb character. You know how, like, the ether is kind of like this liquid stuff that kind of just, like, it's kind of like you put it in water and it spreads out and it kind of, like, covers everything? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a liquid thing that, like, you kind of watch and it spreads out and just, like, covers, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. way it moves. Yeah, yeah, As we're having this conversation, like, my sadness is like the ether. Like, you're talking and I'm just... The sadness is covering and I'm like, I'm zoning out because I'm so sad. You're, you're, you're <laughs> it's like, the ether. You're like whenever, uh, whenever uh, Natalie Portman <laughs> was doing her, uh, her Jean Grey impression from, uh... The third X Men movie when her eyes got black, when her eyes got black, and her her arms spread, and everything just starts coming out of her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So should we give our ratings now? No, I still have more stuff we had to talk. But yeah, uh, his, oh, yeah. his hand gets cut off. That's what I wanted to mention. Uh, his hand gets cut off. That's no, what you did mention. That's that, the, silly. Well, but why I was mentioning it is because the oh, whole oh yeah yeah the, the the Star Wars Easter or the Star Wars references throughout the, this phase two. Yeah, and I and I'm definitely going. to... We'll be on the lookout for more of those, and we're going to mention them every time. Yeah, because uh, Iron Man 3 and this one, these were the first two. Oh, uh, another thing I'd like to add, even though I, so I miscounted as three things that, that I wanted to add. Uh, the second one now being How the Stan Lee. Stan Lee. What was the Stan Lee cameo here? Very forgettable. I do. I, <laughs> I, I know. Oh, it was in the, the psych ward whenever uh, Selvig's yeah, uh, that's right. teaching. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought it was funny. What he say? He, can I have my shoe back? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a, that was a funny line. That was one of the good jokes for me. Um, yeah, that was alright. I think Iron Man slightly had Iron Man three slightly had better a better ratio for jokes though. Still, I hate you so much because you're wrong about that. I all opinion. All <laughs> Your opinion, opinion is wrong. Um, We've established that Dave's opinion is right and Gable's is wrong because Gable Dave's an asshole. <laughs> So, it, it is inc- so his opinion's right. It is incredible how many times a week that D- Dave says something. I'm like, well, I think this is how it happened. He's like, mm, I don't know, dude. And then I start looking it up. I'm like, I'm going to okay. prove Dave wrong this time. And then, then I put my phone quietly back let's, in my pocket and try to move on with the, the next conversation. Okay, hold on. Let's, so let's, the, the Infinity Stones. Let's clearly so establish here that this isn't a case of like, Dave is so much smarter than Gable, who's always right. This is a case of Dave's memory is slightly better than Gable's. This is true. So he can remember it a little bit better, so he's right. <laughs> That's all it is. Well, thank you for giving me some sort of credit. Yeah, you're not dumb. <laughs> um, no, the, the third and final thing I want to talk about that we should be talking about from review to review is the uh, Infinity Stones. We're going to be keeping track of where all the Infinity Stones are going in each movie. Yeah, um, I'll add something to this on the bottom. Um, so we have three that we're aware of. Uh, we don't exactly know where the scepter is, but we do know that it is with shield. Yeah, the tesseract, well, and we'll have names for all the stones too. I don't know which ones. You which. saw that, right? It scared me too. <laughs> uh, the tesseract is with the Asgardians. It's currently in their weapons vault. Um, or, yeah, I think it's with like, the yeah, weapons it's, vault. Yeah, it's it's like their trophy room. Yeah, something like it's that. It's like the Justice League trophy room. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Aether is now with the Collector, which makes complete sense. Why wouldn't you leave the Infinity Stone with a shady character? Yeah, which um, is complete. I it just doesn't make sense. No. Nah. And like, what even makes less sense about it is uh, he's like one down, five to go. Yeah. And it's like, and well, I was I was theorizing in the Lost the Lost File that um, he's working for Thanos. Yeah. Where he, in as much as like Thanos, I mean, he's trying to make money. I mean, just think how much money Thanos would fucking... You know what I mean? If he's trying to... like, Thanos is clearly rich. Yeah, I just thought... He's like, he's like fucking uh, Scrooge in the yeah. DuckTales. He swims in money. Yeah, it's, it's just really funny. I thought of a funny fake scenario here. It, it is really funny that the, the his plan for collecting these Infinity Stones is just to let people donate the Infinity Stones. But I thought maybe 
he has like on the telephone post down down the galaxy there. He has a like a like a lost Infinity Stone like flyer up and it's stapled to the post. He's and like, if you have any information, <laughs> call one eight hundred Thanos. One one eight hundred collector. One eight hundred. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that was pretty clever. Is because one eight hundred collect. Collect. Call call collector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of funny. Yes, so that was that? accidentally funny. Wait, so what are we doing now? What is it? Are we done with uh, Sparkle Dogs? Let's read the synopsis for Thor Dark World. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> um, just, okay, I I think... Okay, so you're going to just go down the list and then give it? Is what you're, you're adding, just adding it in? Okay. Yes. Um, I got Captain America, the first Avenger at number one, ten Sparkle Dogs. The Avengers at number two with nine Sparkle Dogs. Uh, Iron, the first Iron Man with nine Sparkle Dogs is number three. Number four is the Incredible Hulk with eight. Number five is the Black Panther, also with eight. Uh, Thor, the first one, uh, with eight. Thor, it was called Thor, 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 Thor the, the first one. one. Thor, yeah. the, Thor the first is Guardian. Yeah. Uh, that had eight. Iron Man 2 with seven Sparkle Dogs. Uh, that's number seven, fittingly. Uh, number eight is Iron Man three with five Sparkle Dogs. What's wrong with you? And number nine is Thor: The Dark World with four Sparkle Dogs. See, I that, normally don't care about the majority, but everyone knows Iron Man three is worse. I hate you. Here, see, here's why I let me explain this. So whenever uh. I we had discussions, and I've tried to clear this up with how I should rate movies. Like, like a numerous amount of times, especially when we started out with the show, because I was like, should I rate with how good the movie is or how much I liked it? And you're like, well, it should be like the same thing in a way. I'm I remember like, that discussion. You do? Okay, yeah. Well, like, so I'm sitting here thinking about how much I like Thor The Dark World, and like, if you ask me, hey, you can put one Marvel movie on right now, what would it be? And if you ask me this question... A hundred times in a row. If you ask me this question 500 times in a row, I don't think I'd ever say Thor the Dark World. Like, I'm not saying it's the worst movie ever. It's not. It's just not. Like, I, I have no desire to watch this movie. None. I can't believe you give, give it a below average. That's I, what's up. I give it four. That's below average. It's just it's so uninteresting to me. And the stuff that, like I said, there were. It would be lower, but like there's the stuff that I do like the like the stuff that went on with their family, like with, with Loki and uh, what was the mom's name, Freda, Frigga, Frida, Frigga, it's, yeah, like all the all the, the the family drama that was going on in this, that that stuff's the stuff that still brings it up to not like an awful rating, just a slightly below average rating. All right, it's time for the rating that matters. This is yes. the official break room bullshit did rating. I, did I say how many sparkle dogs? Yes, you said four. Yes. Yes. All right, this is the official Break Room Bullshit ratings, the only rankings we give on the show that everyone should listen to ever. Yes, these are the official ones. Yeah. By this, Dave. This is Dave's. Not Gable. Number one, The Avengers with ten sparkle dogs. Number two, Captain America with ten sparkle dogs. Number three, Thor the Dark World with nine sparkle dogs. Number four... Thor with nine sparkle dogs. Number five, Iron Man 2 with eight sparkle dogs. Number six, Iron Man with eight sparkle dogs. Number seven, The Incredible Hulk with eight sparkle dogs. Number eight, Black Panther with five sparkle dogs. And number nine, Iron Man 3 with three sparkle dogs, which is fitting. (laughs) If I had to pick any of the series so far that is my favorite, Thor would be... I don't know. I'm, uh, it would definitely beat Iron Man by far, even with Ragnarok, because I like Ragnarok more than Iron Man three, and I like Thor one and two better than Iron Man one and two. I'm dude, gonna have to after we watch Winter Soldier and Civil War. I'll know for sure, dude. Which if so, one's better? If someone saw your ratings and where you had Thor's The Dark World, they might think you have like Down Burger Syndrome. What does that mean? Yeah, Down Burger Syndrome. What does that mean? What's Down Burger? Left, left, down, L button, R button, triangle, square. That's how you do an ollie. You're not making any sense. How can you even speak when you have Iron Man 3 is not the worst movie? How can you speak? 
How, how can you how can you say anything? Well, that's when easy. Iron Man three is not your least favorite oh, movie. Boy. We had an agreement to be civil, but that well, was then why did the you just why did you just make fun of me for having a number three? Then you just started it. Oh, <laughs> did you forget you just said that? Because you just started it by saying I did that. Start that. <laughs> Dom Breger syndrome. I mean, you realize that everyone knows Iron Man three is the worst movie. Everyone knows that, but you. There's something I still enjoy about Iron Man 3. I don't know what it is. It's so bad! It is, I mean, it is bad. Like, at least in this movie, there isn't a fucking bad guy that was just alive the whole fucking time. This doesn't have Killian Aldrich in it. How is that possibly better than Thor The Dark World? What is wrong with you? I'd still rather watch You it. were just too tired when you watched Thor The Dark World. I was? Dude, you, you were. You were too tired. You we didn't give just it your talked full... about it for an hour in detail. You didn't give it your full attention. You were in a bad mood because you were tired, so it affected how you thought of the movie. I was not in a bad mood. I because you were you. tired. That's what it is. That's the only logical explanation. I mean, that's your explanation. That's not what happened, though. That's the only logical explanation, so it has to be what I'm happened. I'm more tired right now than I was when I watched that movie. Like well, that must be why you gave us such a low ranking then just now. They didn't really yeah, me I won. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, we agree that I'm right. So are we done now? Wait, you started it whenever you said your opinion's the only one that matters. So I defended myself. Yeah, but I've said that sixteen times, and we know it's an ongoing joke. I always say that. Well, I wanted to defend myself a little. That wasn't defending yourself. You knew that you started it. That you started it. So you funny. started it with your smart ass joke that I shouldn't have it ranked so high because it's such a terrible movie. I that was an attack specifically on Thor: Dark World, which we agreed we would not do, and you did it. I thought Down Burger Syndrome sounded you could, funny. You couldn't help yourself, could you? You had to be mean. Does Down Burger Syndrome sound funny or not? I I didn't think it sounded that funny. Really? Yeah. That was like. The majority of my reason for saying it. Ugh, when are we going to be done with this? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> cool. Oh, wait. Let's do our closing stuff. Go. You're in charge. Oh, the uh, plugging? Yeah. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on YouTube. Uh, look us up at Break Room BS. Uh, subscribe. Uh, like. Comment down below. Uh, let us know that you uh, don't hate us completely. Yeah, do whatever. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Here's sad Dave again. Um, and then you can find the links to our other pages at uh, on our YouTube page. Uh, SoundCloud, Instagram. Although you could probably just find it by going on those things and searching Break Room BS. 199. We're so close Ooh. to 200. The big 200. So make that difference. It's only one more than one ninety nine. <laughs> Why does it make any difference? Why is it's it one. more important? It's one. Zeros. It's all about the zeros. Yeah. Are we done? Yep. All right, let's go. Hey, See bye. Ya. Fuck all you guys.